Today, we're talking about the second half of Genshin Impact's 3.1 update and the banners that are coming along with it. And um, the banners are honestly looking pretty, pretty solid. So we've got Nilu's banner and Albedo's banner. So let me go ahead and I'll switch to, there we go, Albedo's banner. We have Zhang Ling, Barbara, and Beidou accompanying them on their banner journey. And I'm... I'm not mad at that. That's not bad. Now, Barbara's kind of a meme because Barbara's just been on so many banners. But as far as like healing goes, she's fine. You can toss th uh, thrilling tails on her and she'll buff your other characters. She heals for a decent amount. And at C6, she's got a pretty cool ability where she'll actually revive somebody that dies in the party. And it's only it's only a really long cooldown, but it, it is there. So that can come in clutch and spiral abyss if you need that. Um, Beto is one of the best electro off field supports, like super, super good. Um, when it comes to her, I believe C2 is her big one. When her lightning starts like jumping to different enemies, that's going to be a big one for her. And then obviously every constellation from there just makes her better and better. Um, C6 Beto is kind of insane, if I'm honest. Now, Zhang Ling is an absolute powerhouse. She's easily the best pyro DPS in the game as far as like damage numbers go. Um, she is an off field pyro DPS, so definitely a super fun character. And I definitely recommend building her if you haven't. I thought that she was just like, because she was free from Spiral Abyss, Spiral Abyss for so long, I was just like, I don't want to build her. That's not fun. Like everybody has her. Dude, she's so good. <laughs> She's really, really good. So I highly recommend if you haven't built her yet, definitely give her a build and she will perform. Trust me. Now, when it comes to Nilu and Albedo, depending upon which one you're wishing for, I have Albedo. I think Albedo is a really, really solid character. I, literally, you can just chuck a bunch of defense on him and he'll he'll do fine. He's a solid, uh, solid support character. He does a lot of like off field DPS as well. Um, his burst isn't super crazy. I've seen his burst do big numbers, but eh. It's not really going to do like crazy numbers in comparison to everything else. For Geo characters like Arataki Ito, he helps get your burst back like crazy. He's basically like a battery for Geo characters, which is dope. I really recommend him if you're planning on, like if you have Arataki Ito and you have a well-built Goro, and maybe you have like a Noel or a Zhongli, and you want to do a mono Geo team, I think Albedo is vital for those teams. But if you're not using that build, Albedo is solid. Albedo is a good character to toss into pretty much any team and just give yourself some extra damage. But if you're putting him on a reactionary team where you're trying to get like big vape numbers, big melt numbers, things like that, he will interfere with some of that. Now, look, when we're talking about Nilu, I kind of missed when her abilities came out. I, I, I wasn't aware that they tweeted this. So we're going to do this live. Shout out to all my December 3rd birthdays is right around the corner. So she does a three strike normal attack combo, which is interesting. Could be pretty good multipliers on that. I think that has to do with her skill because with her skill, she infuses her attacks with Hydro based on her HP. So she scales up her attacks based on her HP, which is dope because she'll be relatively easy to build. She also seems like she's going to apply a bunch of wet status with her whirling steps and all this stuff. So you can see like the effect that comes out there. It actually applies wet. So she seems like she will be solid for reactions. And then her burst is just a bunch of AOE. Uh, hydro damage and then it does one more little burst at the end in general she feels very similar and this is gonna i mean it makes sense honestly she feels like a hydro albedo like literally so i do think she will be solid in that regard but based on her skills it seems like she's gonna be a really solid support for the dendro traveler or maybe a character like tainari basically any character that's gonna be applying dendro um it seems like she's pretty much a direct support for them so yeah, whenever she does her third dance step, it will grant nearby characters Golden Chalice's bounty for 30 seconds upon its completion. And basically does this, where it ramps up the bloom damage of the Dendro reactions with Hydro. So you can see there, it has like an extra little like effect on the, uh, on the little blooms that drop. And it just like, I guess it's gonna do a lot more damage. So it'll increase a character's elemental mastery by 100. They explode quickly after being created. They cannot trigger Hyper Bloom or Burgeon and is considered to be Dendro damage. But there you can see the difference between the Dendro cores and the Bountiful cores. If I'm honest, this doesn't really excite me. Unless I see those Bountiful cores doing like insane damage, it seems like it'll be fine. But the fact that you literally can't use Hyper Bloom, eh, kind of a bummer. 
but I will say she is a beautiful character. I like the, the look of her quite a bit. I think the most exciting part about Dendro is Hyper Bloom, but that's just my two cents. So when it comes to these two banners, I would say either one that you're wishing on, you'll be fine, honestly. I think Albedo is really solid. I think he's he fits better with like my characters that I have. I think if you're looking for Nilo, she's gonna be super niche, but if you build into her, I'm sure she'll be fun. Now the weapon banner. Oh, the key of... I'm not even going to try to butcher that. We've got the key and the primordial Jade Cutter. Jade Cutter's kind of busted. <laughs> we all kind of know that. We've also got some new four stars on the banner, which uh, we don't know anything about. Sifo's Moonlight and then another one. We've also got Sacrificial Bow there, Dragon's Bane and um, whatever, Pain Slasher. But to properly say if you should wish on this or not, we've got to check out the key figure out what's going on with that thing. So the key of Kajni suits, 66% HP with a base attack of 542, pretty low base attack. Uh, HP is increased by 20%, jeez, another 20%. So you basically get 80% here. When elemental skill hits opponent, you gain the grand him effect for 20 seconds. This effect increases the equipping character's elemental mastery by 0.12% of their max HP. The effect can trigger once every 0.3 seconds max of three stacks. When the effect gains three stacks or when the third stacks duration is refreshed, the elemental mastery of nearby party members will be increased by 0.2% of the equipping character's max HP. Oh. So think of it this way. Let's say for easy numbers, you have 40,000 HP on the dot. So you're getting 0.12% of their max HP as elemental mastery. So if you have 40,000 HP, 120 elemental mastery, something like that. I think that math is, I think, I think that math checks out, but your other party members will also have their elemental mastery increased by like 200. This is super specific. I just want to, I'm, I'm going to stop doing the math. It's super specific. This weapon is literally just built for Nilu. I don't know anyone else who could use this effectively. This feels like it is like the Nilu weapon, which makes it hard to recommend to wish for if you're not pulling for Nilu. Like Jade Cutter's busted, right? Like Jade Cutter's really, really good. But the key almost feels too specific. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. We also have some other four stars we can talk about. I don't know. This almost feels like bait. I feel like that weapon's kind of trash. Just because it's one of those weapons like Jade Cutter is amazing because you can get it on Nilu and it'll work on Nilu and be good. But you can also put it on Ayato. You can put it on Kaching. You can put it on the, the main character. You can put it on the Traveler. You can put it on, I mean, literally anybody. Like, the weapon's just good. We do also have some new four stars to talk about. So we have Zifu's Moonlight, the uh, the sword here. Or Zifu's Moonlight, I just, excuse me. So this one is an elemental mastery weapon with a really low base attack of 510. The following effect can be triggered every 10 seconds. The equipping character will gain 0 0.036 energy recharge for each point of elemental mastery they possess for 12 seconds. With nearby party members gaining 30% of this buff for the same duration. Multiple instances this weapon can allow this buff to stack this effect will trigger even if the character is not on the field so interesting so automatically you're already gaining 0.36 times 165 whatever that math is um so i mean this could be a really solid weapon for like characters that need a lot of em i mean this feels like it could be a good solid weapon for nilo if i'm honest but i will say this with multiple refinements could be pretty nasty this could be a really solid energy recharge sword um but like i said this is gonna be elemental mastery so could be good on be good on kazuha we'll have to see this one's a weird one like i said i'm not i'm not sure about that one and then the wandering even star um this is gonna be the catalyst version um seems like it'll give the same thing it's just gonna be buffing for attack so it will give 24% of their elemental mastery's bonus attack for 12 seconds. So very similar here. Um, I don't know that I love these weapons. I think elemental mastery is one of those kind of like not exciting stats. So people kind of sleep on it, but in general, it seems like it'll be solid. I mean, I don't know. I think I like the energy recharge one better just because I value energy recharge a little bit higher than elemental mastery for the most part. In general, I think the weapons banner is kind of sus. I probably would wait. <laughs> If you're literally just going for Jade Cutter, um, I would hate to see somebody go for Jade Cutter and then get baited and get the key, especially if you're not going for Nilu. If you're going for Nilu and you get and you get Nilu and you're trying to get like a good weapon for her, uh, either of these five stars will do you well. But if you're going, if you're not going for Nilu, like if you're wishing for Albedo and then you want to wish on the weapon banner, just stop. Just don't, don't do that. Just, just wait. Jade Cutter will be back and uh, Nilu will be back. And yeah, I will be back because this is the end of the video.
Um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on these banners. I think the banners are decent. I don't think the banners are like blowing me away. Nilu seems like she's going to be so specific that I'll probably never wish for her. I know that's making somebody sad or mad or something in the comments. So let me know your thoughts. Do you plan on wishing for Nilu? Do you think that she is going to be a character that you are going to look forward to playing with? Like I said, I really value Hyper Bloom. I think that's probably the most fun that I have with Dendro. So I don't really want to take that out of the rotation. But also like I have Ayato. And Ayato is a main DPS. Yeah, he's not a support character, so they're not directly comparable. But Ayato just feels like a better version of what they were trying to do here, in my opinion. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys watching. Big shout out to the members of the channel. Thank you so much for helping make these videos possible. And yeah, if you guys have some time, definitely check out the Sinnoh video that we worked on. That video took a super long time. It was like literally like a month's worth of resin just spent on Sinnoh. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So I appreciate you guys checking out that video. I will see you over there. I love you. Peace.